Hello, my name is Zahi Ben Shabbat. I'm a senior prototype architect at AWS, and I'm here today to talk about application development for Backstage I.O. on AWS. This is the first chapter, introduction. In many organizations, it is a reality of which developers have to learn and use multiple tools, such as Kubernetes, GitLab, Jenkins, JFrog, Splunk, Datadog, and more. And that's even before we talk about AWS-specific services and technologies. In addition, developers need to access each tool separately and jump between them to be productive throughout the development process. Luckily, Backstage IO platform can help to introduce a standardized framework and minimize the effort required by the application developer. The solution we will discuss in this series of videos is based on work we did for a customer to help them use AWS Cloud and enable their application engineers to use Backstage.io. We built this solution while working with our customer and understanding the needs of an enterprise organization. We designed this for companies who need to run and manage multiple applications by multiple teams on multiple regions and account. The first objective we had to solve is to understand that large customers may use multiple identities when using the cloud and therefore cannot rely on a single set of credentials. We solved this by using Backstage External Identity Provider Integration and Group Mapping to IAM roles. The next objective was to find a way to simplify the use of AWS services and create a unified developer experience. We did this by diving deep to the persona of application developer and bring all the tools and data it may need to a single page. Lastly, we planned and built a corresponding backend to support the user experience and actions a developer will need to do. Out of the box, the solution comes with AWS backend infrastructure to support provisioning the required applications and their unknown resources, including the runtime environment. A set of backstage front-end plugins to allow the developer to quickly create applications on AWS without having to log in to AWS console or requiring the developer to understand the underlying networking and permissions in AWS. Templates and example to demonstrate how different application can be created, including Node.js, Python, Java Spring Boot, an example of how to instantiate dependent resources such as RDS database, queues, stream, or any other type of resource. An auditing module which captures actions in the front end and back end, the origin identity, and the role used to execute those actions. In the GitHub repository below and in the next chapters, you will find additional information and instructions how to use these components. We'll go over a quick demo to show how the user experience using the Backstage I.O. solution demonstrated. In the main screen, we can see all of our AWS apps. This is also a screen that we can see uh, the different types of environments and environments provider, as well as AWS resources that has been created along with those apps. If we click on create AWS app, we get to see the templates that we have customized. And any customer can customize their own templates uh, as they find fit. Um, and templates could be not just a different programming language, it could also be based on the resources that may be required uh, or the specific business use case that the application is being created for. If we click, for example, on OGS Express Web App, we can simply provide the basic details. And the next thing we'll need to fill in is to select the owner of this app. This is automatically fetched from the identity provider that is mapped to Backstage. In this case, we're using Okta as the identity provider, 
And the groups you see here are the group that are derived from Okta. Once we select the group, uh, we need to set, select a particular AWS environment. We will cover more details about the AWS environment and further chapters. The next step is simply to select the Git name that will be stored for this repo. I'm just selecting the same name of the app, but it doesn't have to be the same. Once we hit the next and we go create, we're essentially making calls to our backend for that particular environment to go and create all of the resources that require to instantiate this app. Once our app is successfully created, we can go back to our applications and access the app. And now we can see the screen of the unified UI for the developer. The first thing we can see is a link for our GitLab source code in case we want to actually see GitLab and the source code. The next thing we can see the relationship that is automatically tied in for this app to be owned by the developer team and depends on the public development environment that we created it on. This is useful because we can see multiple apps for a given environment and we can also map relationship between apps on different environments. The next thing we can see is the access token or the git clone to access the repository. If we simply copy it and go to our terminal, we can go and clone the repo and now we have the repo cloned and we can modify the repo details. So in this case, we can simply change our index.js and say Now all we got to do is to commit a change. And to push it. The next thing we have to do is simply start the app. So it will take our changes and eventually allow us to view the app. Everything you see here is essentially imitate SDK calls or API calls to uh, AWS. So it knows to which container it needs to initiate, in which cluster, and start it, fetch the latest image. We also have access to other things like environment variable, and we can also see the descriptive logs of what resource has been created. Our app has been provisioned and in a few seconds it will be running and then we can access it and with that I'll end the short demo uh, more explanation details will come along in the next chapters you can see activating and run yep. so Thank you for watching this video on application development for Baxter.io on AWS.